It's good to be in God's house this morning. I want to thank God for the opportunity to be back. Thank God for the opportunity to come into his house one more time and to lift his name up. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why we can come into God's house. We can come to see someone we ain't seen in a long time. We can come because we're afraid that the preacher's going to call us and wonder where we're at. We can come into God's house because someone invited us to. There's a lot of different reasons we can come into God's house, but there's one reason that we need to come into God's house. We need to come into God's house with God upon our mind this morning. We need to come into His house this morning with praise upon our lips this morning. Woo! My God's worthy this morning to be praised. Honey, He's worthy. I'm useless. I'm nothing. Praise be to God. But my God is worthy this morning. If you're here this morning, praise God. You know this man called Jesus. You know Him as your personal Savior, praise God. You've got a right. You've got a privilege and an honor to raise your hand, to lift your voice, to thank God because he's blessed you with another day of life this morning. I thank God this morning. He didn't have to wake me up this morning, praise God, but he chose to this morning. He didn't have to keep my family safe last night, but he chose to. I thank you for that this morning. I thank my God. My God's so worthy this morning to be praised. This morning, if you will, if you'll turn with me to the book of Mark. I desire your prayers. You know, we can't do anything without God. But through God, all things are possible. Thank you, Lord. But I stayed here before you this morning, and I thought about what to preach on. And God put this on my heart about a week ago, I guess. And you let me know that today was the day to preach this. So, give me the Lord's will. I'm going to read a little bit for you here. I desire your prayers, as I said. We'll start in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. We'll start the 22nd and 23rd verse, and then we'll skip over to about the 35th verse. Uh, Mark 5, verse 22. All right. Starting in the 22nd verse of the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, and it said, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now he's talking about Jesus here. Jesus had just come onto the scene, just come across the water on the ship. And he said, Jairus, when he seen him, he fell at his feet. And if he saw him greatly, saying, My little daughter lie at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And then in the 35th verse, it says here, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue. Let me start up. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John and the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And he said the woman, and, and them that wept, and wept greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed in the scorn. But when he had put them all out and taken the father, and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and he said unto her, Talatha Kuma, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straight away the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with the great astonishment. And he charged them straight that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Praise God, you may be seated. As I thought about this passage and what I was going to preach about, I, I never really preached about this per se. I, I preached a couple of times about the woman with the issue of blood, which is dead in the center of this passage, but I never really preached about Jairus that I remember of. And I started thinking about here he was in verse number 22, and it says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. And you've got to remember Jesus had just passed over the water and come out of the ship. And 
He was coming on the land, no doubt, walking into the town. And as it says, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Now, the rulers of the synagogue, according to Bible historians, was and this ruler was probably Jairus was probably his position in the synagogue was probably the man that set up everybody to come in to preach on different Sundays to come in to give the word of God and the message and to teach. And so here he comes and he, he came running up to Jesus. Now you got to imagine this. This was a ruler of the synagogue. So the ruler of the synagogue usually he had probably fine power on the power on compared to everyone else. He was probably dressed a little nicer than most of the crowd that thronged around Christ. He come running up to Christ when he seen him coming, and I can only see as the people probably made way for him as he came because he was a man of importance, a man of stature in their belief and in their system there in the synagogue. And they probably each and every one probably knew of him or knew him. But here he come running, and he come running up to the master as he seen him. And it says, J it says, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. I want you to know this morning, you think about this for just a second. Here come a man that probably was very well dressed in clothes, and he was very probably, probably even had quite a bit of pride. He owned a, had a great position in the synagogue. He was a man with authority and power. But he seen Christ walk up on the bank, praise God. And the Bible says he come running to him, praise God. He come running and he done something, praise God. I feel like the churches of the day need to be doing. The Christians of the day need to be doing. He fell at his feet. He wasn't afraid to get his precious clothes dirty. He didn't care, praise God, who saw him or who wondered about what he was doing. He fell at the feet of Christ. I want you to know, honey, I thought about it and I thought about it. What do you want me to preach out of this message, God? I want you to know what he wants me to preach. It's time we come back to the feet of Christ. It's time, it's time, praise God, that we get down and we forget about the pride. And we forget about the clothes and we forget about all of the errors that we put on. Honey, it's just a walk between you and Christ this morning. It's just a walk between me and him, praise God. I want you to know this morning, honey, you've got to have this relationship with Christ if you want to make it home this morning. If you want to go to heaven this morning, there has to be a relationship between you and Christ. We have for too long, praise God, put Christ to the side of our life, put him on this side or on that side. We put him in the truck of our cars and carried him around. We're for too long, praise God, not put Christ where Christ needs to be. We need to be in his feet, praise God. We need to be bowed down. We don't need to worry about the clothes that we got on. We don't need to worry about whether our brother thinks we're crazy, praise God. There's something else here that we need. We need that relationship with our Christ. We need that relationship, praise God, with this man called Jesus. I want you to know that morning when J.R. has come out and he saw Jesus coming, he had a reason to fall at his feet that morning. Circumstances had changed. Now he had probably been to that synagogue before Christ preached often in synagogues. He may have even been to Jairus' synagogue before. Jairus may have set him up the appointment and the time to be there. But I want you to know this morning, when he saw him come this day, there was a difference. <laughs> there was a difference. The need in Jairus' life had changed. It had changed, praise God, from being the one who set him up to preach or to talk. It changed to someone that needed him more than he needed anything else in this world. He had a 12-year-old daughter, the Bible said, at home. And it was his only one, praise God. 12 years old, praise God. And she lay sick and died. It changed the circumstances of Jairus' relationship with Christ. We need to change the circumstances with our relationship with Christ. We need to get serious with Christ this morning. We can come to church and fill these fat pews every Sunday if we want to. We can be what people think what Christians is. But I want you to know something. If you don't have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it won't do you any good. You're doing nothing more than sitting on a padded pew, listening to a bald-headed preacher, hot 
holler at you on Sunday morning. Jairus' circumstances had changed. He suddenly had this 12-year-old girl, his daughter, and his only daughter, and she was dying. He didn't need Jesus this time to fill a seat in the, in the synagogue and fill behind the podium and teach. He didn't come to him for that reason this time. <laughs> he came to him for something much more precious this time. He came to him to save his only daughter. To come, Christ, come with me, please, I beg you. My daughter's laying sick, and she's going to die. Please come, Christ. And Jesus said, basically, I guess the way he got was, let's go. And he started walking. But he got thrown by the crowd. We all know the story of the, the woman with the issue of blood. And this is where she came forth. And she touched with the hem of his garment. We all know this, song, this story. And we all know how it made her whole. So Jesus was on his way to Jairus, his house, before this lady came up. And I want you to know that as he went through the crowd, no doubt Jesus, Jesus already knew what was going to happen. He already knew what was going to take place. But Jairus did. All Jairus knew was that he needed a miracle. And the only miracle he knew didn't reside in the synagogue. The only miracle he knew didn't sit at home waiting. The only miracle he knew was Christ. Let me tell you something this morning. I don't know a lot of people. I don't have a lot of power, a lot of authority. I don't want a lot of power, a lot of authority. I don't have a lot of pull. I couldn't get myself out of trouble if I got into trouble. But I have a personal relationship with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings as well. I have a personal relationship, Brother Taylor, one on one, brother, with the man who slung the stars in the orbit. Who put the plans, praise God, and hung them one by one in the universe. I got a personal relationship with this man named Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's not only good here, praise God. It's good when I leave this walk so I There'll be a day, honey, when Greg Paul won't get up one morning. Or Greg will go to work and he won't come home one night. There'll be a day when my days is done. There'll be a day when your days are done. And if you don't know this man called Jesus, where will you be? If I could throw my feet, if, if Jairus throwed himself in the feet of Christ because he needed a miracle, I want you to know if you're sitting here and you're lost this morning, you need a miracle just as bad as Jairus did. You need a miracle that only this man named Christ has. We need to get Christ out of the way. You need to get Christ out of the way. You need to get the thoughts of men out of the way. And you need to get at the feet of Christ this morning. Now, if you've been walking along this way for a while, and you're saved and ready to go, let me tell you something. You need to be at the feet of Jesus Christ. We all want to serve him from afar. I want to have him just close enough to me. Praise God, this is the way the world thinks. We want to have him just close enough to him that we can run and get him when things fall apart. <coughs> I want to have him just close enough to me, praise God, that I can run and ask to make it to him if my family starts falling apart. But that's not the way we're supposed to live and serve Jesus Christ. If we want the blessings that come from serving our Lord and our Master Jesus, we have to have that personal walk with Him. We have to have that relationship with Him. You go home tonight, you don't speak to your spouse for about two and a half weeks. You set them on the shelf somewhere in the back of a closet. And you leave them there. And you don't take them out. You don't think about them. You don't wonder about them. In about two and a half weeks from now, when something goes wrong and you need them, you go get them out of the closet. Let me ask you something. What kind of relationship did you have with that person? You think that ain't how we do Christ? Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe it's me that does Christ that way. But I got a funny feeling I'm not the only one. I got a funny feeling that we don't run to Christ to speak 
Sometimes it's like a strange feeling to us. It should never be a strange feeling to call the feet of Christ. It should never be a strange feeling to bow before the Master, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But I want you to know, as he was talking, and they had the issue of the one with the issue of blood, then one came from Jairus' house, verse 35, and it says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, Certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? So he brought a message to Jairus. Don't worry about it. Your daughter's already died. What you fear greatly has already happened. Your daughter's dead. It's done. What did Jesus tell me? I love what Jesus told you next. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. <coughs> we need to walk through this life and be not afraid. We need to only believe. You say, well, that always things always work out the way I want them to work out. Absolutely not. It's God's will, praise God. We're living on his time. We're living in his world, praise God. It's not us, it's him. We need to figure out that he's first and we're last, praise God. We need to figure out where we stand with him. I'm not the creator, I am the created. I'm not, praise God, the master. I am the servant. Amen. This morning. And as soon as we figure out where our place is with Christ, praise God, I want you to know, honey, it gets a lot easier to drop to your knees and to praise Him. It gets a lot easier to drop to your feet, I mean, drop at His feet and give Him praise and ask Him for the things that might come about that you need. We've got our touch with Christ. We turn the TVs on. We watch religious programs on TV. They'll have a marriage program. 35,000 people in attendance. And not one time did they open that. There's something wrong with that scenario. You can take it, you can believe it, you can be mad at me for the next time if you want to. There's something wrong with the scenario when you don't open what God gave us to live like. When you don't praise God, believe what thus saith the word of God. When you don't want to follow the very God that you say that you belong to. There's something wrong. And then when we go, like Jairus, when we decide we need him more than anything else in this world, we run to him. And then we get frustrated with him if things don't work out exactly the way we want them to work out. Sometimes, praise God, God has to be put first. Amen. We back up. Not sometimes. All the time, Christ has to be put first. We need to figure out our world just where we stand. And I promise you, the feet of Christ, the praise and the worship of him there, there's no sweeter place, brother Peter. There's no sweeter place than to drop to your knees in front of Christ and to give him the praise he deserves. Jairus, his relationship had suddenly changed with Jesus Christ. No longer was he just somebody he brought into the synagogue to preach. He needed him more than he needed his next breath of life. Because he had an only daughter that was dying. And he wanted to see her healed. And Jesus told him, they come and say that she's dead about the father of the master. Jesus said, whoa, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered. Can you imagine what the walk was like back to J.R.S.'s house? Here's J.R.S. just got the word, daughter's dead. But J.R.S. is walking with the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he knew that when he come and fell down in his feet that morning. He was walking with the one, praise God, that if anybody was going to make his daughter live again, it was this man that he was walking with. Not only was he walking with him, but he was going to his house. 
I remember the morning I got saved. I was as dead as this little girl was dead. I was lost. I didn't have a clue. But God, praise God, sent it fit that morning to save me. I'm not worthy to be saved. I'm not worthy to stand before you and preach his word. But I can because God said I could this morning. I can because my king is the Lord of lords and the master of masters. I can this morning because Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he was. He's never once left me, Brother Danny. He's never forsaken me. He's always been with me since the day that I gave my life to him. And he was with Jairus as Jairus was going to his darkest time of his life. Christ walked with him. There's some dark times down here. There's people, places, things that I've not faced yet. There's people that lose kids, lose family, lose things that's close to them. I've not ever lost anyone that's really, really my immediate family yet. But it's on its way. I'm not crazy enough to know, don't you think, that they're going to live forever. We all have a time to come and a time to go. But it ain't how we come that matters. We can be born the richest of rich or the poorest of poor. It ain't how we're born that matters. You can come with a C-section or natural birth. It don't make any difference how you come into this world. It don't make any difference what path you leave when you know, you're in this world until you find Jesus Christ. And once you find Jesus Christ and you get on that path, praise God, all the difference in the world, you have this money. Because when you leave this box of life, you don't leave alone. I have no intention of burning the paper. None. It don't interest me in the least. I don't want to be killed and forsaken. I want to put out the fire. All this fat running here down and put it up. Or maybe pick it up a little more. I don't know. I think it burned off. Let me tell you something. Jairus needed something for Christ that morning that only Christ could give. The story goes on to say that Christ went on to his house. And when he got there, the people laughed and scorned him. When he told them the damsel only slept. They laughed at Christ. This morning, our world is laughing at our God. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding this morning. Our world is laughing at Jesus this morning. You turn on TV, they can say, I serve God. They can say, God, 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 all day long. You won't hear Jesus Christ name mentioned. Because everybody in this whole lot of the God that they serve. Supposedly, my mom, Buddha, whoever it is, everybody's got a God. There was the one Jesus Christ. There was the one that come and died on Calvary for the likes of me. But one. God's only son. Woo. Lord, Lord, God's only son came down right. from heaven above and paid for my sins yeah. and your sins and yours and yours. He paid for our sins this morning so we could be saved, so we could go home to heaven one day, so he could give us that miracle that we need. I didn't have to go beg him to his feet. He came to me that morning at Seco Church. He came to me. He sought me. And he'd already bought me, as those songs said. He sought me that morning, and he said, Greg, Wake up. You need me more than you'll ever know. I am salvation. Come and meet the one, praise God. Come and meet the one who died on the cross on Calvary and rose on that dirt in the morning morning. Come and meet the one, praise God, and own salvation. This morning, praise God. It's time we come and meet the one who owns the salvation. It's time. strange thing to come and cry in his feet. Make it never day occurs. <laughs> what he's done for you alone up to this point if you're saved. 
is more than you've ever been worth to them. People say, you don't know my life. You don't know what I mean. I don't have to. I can already tell you. My God died on the cross on Calvary. My Lord of Lords and King of Kings, he died on the cross on Calvary for me. The flesh was ripped from his bone for me. For me. For my sins. For your sins, brother. For yours. For yours, brother. You all realize how much he loved you to come and die on that cross for you? Now, in Jairus's case, all he needed to do was walk with Jairus to, to his house. Come on, son. I'm going to give you that miracle you need. Let's go. Now, where's that daughter? Where's she laying dead? Let's go find her. And they laughed in the storm. The same way the world's laughing now. But I want you to know, when he went to their house, went up to that little girl's room, where she lay? He put them all out. Put them all aside. Let them laugh. Let them stay down there and laugh, though. I got business to take care of up here. I got something to do up here in this room. And he walked in with that little girl. Woo! Praise be to God. And he reached there and he got her by the hand. And he told her to arise. Wouldn't you like to be there that morning when he told her to arise? I mean, she didn't lay there for a minute and think about it. She got up. Praise God. She got up. She walked the Bible said. And he said, Peter. The morning he came to you or night or whatever it was, he saved you. When he saved you and you stood back up on me, he said, Arise, praise God. You're a different creature. You're not dead no longer, praise God. Stand up, praise be to God. Let me feed you with the God's word. Let me feed you, praise God, what you need to sustain you. We're forgiven about who Christ is. I'm thankful for this church here in Burnham. I'm thankful that somebody like me can still stand up and say what thus saith the word of God. And I ain't seen anybody get up and leave yet. You may have wanted to, but you've not yet. I'm thankful that there's still a church like that. Praise God. But I want you to know something. It's right around the corner. Honey, when you come, you are not going to be able to go to a church and preach God's word. It's just around the corner. It's coming. You better take all that you can take now. You better put it in your heart and you better find God's word be. And you better write it on the tablets of your heart, tablets of your heart, and you better keep it there. Praise be to God. Because there will come a day and you can mark it down that you won't be able to come and worship freely in your own church. But I know the man. I know the man that said I could go home. I know the same man that performed that miracle that morning with Jairus and her and his little daughter. I know that same man, he performed that same miracle with me. How many in here has he performed that same miracle on? How many times, praise God, since you've been saved, has he come to his side and held your hand when he was going through the worst thing he could possibly go through? How many times has he been there when you called out his name? How many times has your Lord of Lord been with you and saved you and watched over you and protected you and gave your family life, gave you a job to go to, a car to drive, a payday to get on Friday, or whatever you get paid? How many times has he done that for you? But yet, sometimes we get it in our minds somehow. Like possibly the people in the synagogues did. For God. Mighty. Well dressed in a pretty tie. Or nice clothes. It makes us no one but a clump of anointed dirt. Larry, poor old Larry. <laughs> Went to church with a man named Larry Holbrook. God rest his soul. What he said. He said, I'm nothing more than an anointed clump of dirt. In here, this morning, no matter how pretty you are, no 
no matter how, what kind of clothes you're wearing on your back, you are an anointed one of the earth. Think about it. My Lord and Savior this morning should mean more to us than anything you could possibly ask for. Anything you could possibly want. However, we put everything in the world before him. We need to learn to do what J.R.S. did. We need to learn to specify what we want from Christ. We need to get in our mind and our hearts what we're really after from this relationship with Christ. And we need to go get Christ and we need to fall at his feet. And we need to make sure when we get up from his feet that he knows exactly what we was doing there in the first place. We need to give him praise. We need to give him glory. We need to give him the honor. He is worthy this morning. You don't ever have to praise me. You don't have to thank me to about me one way or the other. If you forget my name and you call me Brother Joe Cosby and I says don't come back, you have lost nothing. But if you forget Jesus Christ, you have lost everything. Yeah. Without this man called Jesus, you cannot go to heaven. Now, I think I've preached here about three or four times now, and I think each time I've said that same thing. And if you let me preach here more, you're going to hear that same thing. Without Jesus Christ, you'll never make it into heaven. Amen. There is a man named Jesus that died on the cross for me and you. He paid a horrific price. He paid for salvation. Boy, what a price he paid. I can't afford it. I don't think any of you in here can afford it. I know you do. We couldn't put all the monies in the world together and afford it. That price, that price that we paid. And God knew it. So he sent the only thing he had to pay that price. The only thing worthy enough. This morning, I don't know what your problems do in this world. I don't know what you're going through in your life. There's a lot of people facing a lot of things right now. I can't promise you that everything's going to turn out the way you want it to turn out. I cannot promise that. God never said that. But he did promise that he'd be your needs. He did promise that he would answer a prayer. But that don't mean you're going to answer the way we want to answer it all the time. I sat with two little boys because I adopted my little boys. I prayed to have them, me and my wife have them naturally. That wasn't the way God wanted it to be done. God wanted it a different way. Still got the same results. Same results. This morning, please, let me leave you with one thought. We're getting ready to leave out of here in a few minutes. We're all going to go our different ways. We're going to go eat. My wife's birthday is yesterday. Happy birthday, my wife. We're going to go eat after this, the Lord's will. There's everybody here who's probably got somewhere to go, something to do. Please don't run out that door and forget about Christ. Please don't run out that door and forget where He should stand in your life, what part He should take in your life. He will not be a second good. He will not take a second place in your life. He has to be first. Yeah. Has to be first. The quicker we realize this, and the quicker we get serious about Christ, the more you're going to see Him bless. He's going to bless in your life. He's going to bless in your world. He's going to bless in your church. Christ has a storehouse of blessing. But we have to realize where we need to serve Him from. I want to be always looking up to Him. It can't be no other way. I love the Lord this morning. Do you love him this morning? Mm -hmm. Where do you stand with Christ this morning? Give us a song, somebody. Where do you stand with Christ this morning? Do you stand knowing him or not knowing him? Do you stand in here ready, blood washed, blood, blood washed, washed with blood of the land, ready to go home? Or do you stand in here lost? No help. Without Christ. This morning, Christ is you. This morning is your chance and your opportunity.
If you don't know him, please don't pass that opportunity up. Go ahead, bro. As we stand. <coughs> Lord, it's been good to me. You know what? He's been good to you too. I don't know what you're going through, but he's been good to me. I can assure you that. I can assure you that. If you'll fall against me, there'll be miraculous things that happen in your life. Miraculous things. The salvation of your soul is one of the biggest miracles I can imagine. To take someone that was unworthy and to make them work. To take someone that was unclean and to wash them clean this morning. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Are you ready to accept Him for a change this morning? Jairus had to change the way he viewed Christ. He had to change what Christ was to him in his life in order to get what he needed from Christ. Same goes with you. Just knowing of Christ is not enough. You have to have that relationship with Christ this morning. You have to come to Christ. And just as Jairus did, follow this way. Say, Lord, Lord, I got something I need help with. I got a soul that needs saved. This morning, don't forget Christ. If you've been saved for a long time and along the way, our knees get old and they get hard to bend sometimes. I can understand. I get older, I can feel that now. But your heart should never be too hard to bend. You should always bend your heart to Christ. And to pray earnestly before you. And to give me praise and thanks. This morning, no matter how long you've been saved, it's not too late to call to be Christ.